Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the uh, 15th special noodle class that we are broadcasting again live from Yamane Manufacturing Headquarters, Kagawa, Japan. And my name is Akira, and I'm going to be host uh, for this class that we are going to be covering uh, Tori Python. Tori means like chicken, chicken python ramen today. And we're very excited to do that. And uh, so we have uh, Megumi. Uh, so she's, being, she's going to be baking uh, ramen noodles that are suitable for Tori Python ramen. And she's been working with us like for the past uh, several years, um, working with a lot of uh, people who want to develop, uh, start up their own like ramen shops and wooden shops around the world. And so, you know, uh, if you're interested in like um, doing uh, ramen restaurant, like new businesses, like um, you may be interested in talking to us shortly. Um, so we are going to be talking about um, Tori Python ramen and we're going to be going through like some slides and doing some lecture and then uh, we're going to be getting to like practical part where we make uh, noodles from scratch and then uh, after that we're going to make uh, we're going to go to the uh, kitchen where we uh, normally use it for uh, our ramen school uh, udon school uh, but like here like we're going to go through go through some uh, slides first lecture first All right so we're talking about Tori Python, I mean, like that's an online class, 15. Before we get into that, um, for some of you like who don't know much about us, um, I, I wanna explain like what we do a little bit. Um, so for Yamato Manufacturing Company, we've been in this business like for 45 years. So we are in business of noodles and um, most of the things about like noodles, and so like, but we are, we started out like as a manufacturer of noodle machines. These noodle machines are designed for um, restaurants, small production, um, and then like doing like Japanese noodles like ramen, udon, soba, and other types of noodles like from scratch. We've been running a uh, noodle school uh, on ramen, udon, and soba like for 20 years. So we, we conduct school here in Kagawa, and that's why we have a kitchen here. And we also have a school in Tokyo, and we have another school in Singapore. We have customers using our machines in different countries, 61 countries and more coming. And we have eight offices in Japan, uh, including Tokyo, Osaka. We have co uh, offices in Seoul, Seoul, Korea. We have offices in Singapore, Netherlands, the United States. We have partners in, uh, in different countries. And so, and um, so we are, we are basically like a group of noodle experts that help um, our customers um, develop their own businesses, like noodle restaurants, noodle products. We provide training, recipes, uh, whatever, whatever our customers need to start up their own businesses. So if you are if you're interested in um, doing something with us, uh, please feel free to like contact us. So we're talking about Tori Python ramen. So we're going to talk about like what it is and what's important for good Tori or chicken Python ramen, um, ingredients, methods, and we're going to talk about noodles for uh, Tori Python ramen. And we're going to make, like Megumi is going to make like Tori Python ramen noodles on the ramen machine later. And we're going to go to the kitchen and. Uh, we have actually our school instructor like kind of you when know, I'm ready for showing you guys how um, some of some of the Tori Python ramens are uh, put together, and he's also going to cover uh, some aspect technical aspects of uh, Tori Python ramen later in the kitchen. And uh, lastly, we're going to do like FAQ sessions. Like if you have any questions during the class, please send them in the comments. Okay, so so what is what is Tori? What is Python first, right? So Python is like basically is a Japanese word that means uh, cloudy soup, and which is usually high in density. And tori means like I've already talked about like chicken. So tori python ramen is a bowl of noodle soup that features cloudy soup that's mainly made from chicken. Tonkotsu and other types of ramen, uh, cloudy ramen soup, which is which are usually stocks made from like vegetables, mushroom, etc. Are, these, these can be also called um, python because it's cloudy 
soup. And in the opposite side of like this uh, Python is a clear soup that's called like Chintan, which was like standard soup before Python was accidentally made by boiling pork bones for a long time, in, about like 70 years ago. Around 2005, chicken python ramen gained popularity and many shops that offer a variety of chicken python ramen merger since then. Though it's high in density, it's not as heavy as tonkotsu, but packed with umami from chicken. There are many ramen shops that specialize in offering rich curry python ramen in Japan today. So why cloudy and how can we make soup cloudy, right? So the word is emulsification. So emulsification, it happens like when two ingredients that do not normally mix easily are combined. So these ingredients are usually fat or oil and water-based liquid like stocks of water. Examples of foods being emulsified are milk and mayonnaise. Oil and water do not mix naturally, but adding an emulsifier, water and oil mix together. This is what emulsification is about, and it is diff almost almost a definition of python soup. So the extracts of ingredients such as pork bones, whole chicken are emulsified or mixed with water. So for fat or oil to be combined with, wa with water, there needs to be external force mixing or shaking or stirring or addition of emulsifier to maintain its stability. Like you know, fat and oil like being st stably mixed. That's why we need to we need to like keep stirring. For example, like these pictures. Um, you know, that's where we like make stocks in our school. So like each stock pot is cooking like you know chinta. Some of the stocks uh, stock pots are cooking chinta broth, chinta stocks. Some of them are cooking python stocks. So we need to like stir them with this uh, pad and uh, to promote a emulsification during boiling. So we also have to apply high heat to bring water to boil to extract gelatin and essence from chickens. It takes high heat, long time to extract gelatin from the, from the ingredients. So in school, when we cook stocks, you also take measurements of, of stock density using a tool like refragmator shown in the picture. So this allows us to be consistent in quality, at least sub, sub stock density. So the, typically the chicken stocks range from breaks of like five to 10 for chicken python soup. For chicken python stocks, it usually takes five to eight hours of boiling, depending on the target density. So there are many emulsifiers in, in case of python stocks, but it's mainly gelatin. Gelatin come, can come from different ingredients but typically in ramen stocks, the following are used to add gelatin and viscosity to the stocks. Pork trotters, uh, pork skin, pork thighs, chicken feet, chicken skins. So cooking these ingredients with the main stock ingredients like whole chickens add viscosity as well as collagen to the stocks. So viscosity helps increase the umami of stocks because the more viscous the stocks are, the longer they can stay on the tongue. So the stocks taste better as we can sense more umami for a longer time. But too much viscosity would cause heaviness in stocks, so we need to control it. And we are talking about tori or chicken python today. So the stocks are made from whole chicken, chicken carcass, and or chicken feet, skins. Uh, there can be other ingredients used for stocks, such as like some, some types of vegetables, um, mushrooms, seafood, but, there, but these are chicken are the main ingredients that the name suggests. So python soup is basically high in stock density, and there are many versions that, well, there's, there are versions that soups are viscous or not. And when people choose sort of python ramen, they want to enjoy soup that's packed with umami of chicken. The soup should bring out the pure flavors of chicken. So this is the base stock, and we need the other components to make the soup. They are base sauce and or tare, called tare, like flavored oil. Typically, when we refer to tori python ramen, the soup is usually white and cloudy. So the soup base soup so base sauces are usually used that are usually used are like mainly salt based sauce. 
but there are variations of Toripide and ramen that feature miso, shoyu, and others as well. And flavored oils can be many different types, such as leek, chili, garlic, and others, depending on what kinds of aroma or flavors we want. And speaking of oil, we get chicken oils as the byproduct of chicken stocks. So we can use these oils as flavored oils as well. And here are some ingredients we can consider for the components of Torrey Python. Uh, so they stock, because like, you know, it's chicken, um, chicken carcass, like we all talked about, or chicken, chicken feet, chicken skins. Others uh, like vegetable, uh, there are types of vegetables, seafoods. So vegetables basically add like sweetness to the broth. They sauce, salt, miso, shoyu, and we, we need to like uh, infuse some, some other ingredients with these uh, salt and miso and the shoyu seasoning. Some types of vegetables, sea, seafoods, mushrooms, and the flavor of all like this, various types of vegetables, vegetable oils. And it, again, like we need to infuse these oils with like, other types of uh, ingredients like vegetables or chili, garlic, ginger. So toppings, um, the because it's chicken, like typically the chicken chashu, the breast and thighs, but like usually breast, uh, typically like slowly cooked at the low, low temperature to retain its moisture and seasoned with uh, the salt seasoning, salt like tare, and chicken wings, chicken wings, grilled, seasoned, meatball like ground chicken meat, flavored eggs, the mema nori, diced onions. Diced onions typically use in salt based uh, for python ramen noodles and uh, it gives like kind of freshness in the soup. In various types of vegetables, mushrooms, and noodles of course like wheat, uh, whole wheat, um, different types of grains are used. Like noodles, like we, we probably talk more about them like later, like when we do the noodle section. So types of toy, Python ramen and what's, what's trending. And there are many variations of toy Python ramen dishes, but typically they are either noodle soup dish or tsukemen dish, which is a dipping noodle dish. So we covered tsukemen in the previous class. So tsukemen or dipping noodle dish comes with a bulb dipping sauce that has three times more base sauce than that, that of a standard soup noodle dish. Because dipping the noodles in the soup has to give out like sufficient flavors and taste. Three Python tsukemen has been very popular and it's usually served at ramen shops that specialize in offering three Python ramen along with a standard soup dish. There's Tori Python gyokai, which, is, which means a seafood soup. It features both flavors and tastes, which are structured with chicken stocks and seafood stocks. Various types of fish flakes, clam, kelp, dry sardine, etc. So we, we call this kind of soup a double soup, which has two types of completely different stocks blended. So many specialty shops serve like three Python soup that's high in density and rich in flavors. Though some of them blend some types of seafood stocks, such as like prawn, clam, clam etc. The chicken stocks, the main flavors are from chicken. When people go for Tori Python ramen, what they're looking for is strong but clean flavors of chicken from the soup and noodles that match it. So it's important to have a base stock that's basically pure extract of chicken as well and well made, the bloody smell chicken. All right, so let's start talking about the noodles that are suited for uh, Tori Python ramen. So um, this chart I've been using like for uh, to describe different types of ramen noodles for in the previous classes. And I'm going to use it again. And uh, let me just explain this, how, how this works a little bit. And the horizontal line, this is the hydration ratio of the noodles. So basically how much liquid is contained in noodles. The higher, uh, the better, uh, the softer. And then the vertical line presents the protein content of flour that's used to make these noodles. This is the higher, the harder the noodle texture. And the noodle size, 
that you can see on the right hand side vertically uh, from top like one millimeter to the bottom five. So from top thing to the bottom the thick. And you can see the uh, green small circle like that you can find on the top left corner that says Hakata Ramen. This is low in hydration ratio and but high in protein content of flour. So this is a hard noodle. And the size is thin, 1.4 millimeter. And Tsukemen that we just talked about, the dipping noodles, uh, this is high in hydration ratio, uh, but low in protein content of flour. And so this is a soft noodle. And, uh, but the noodle size is thicker, like 1.5, 3.0 millimeters, so like this thick noodle, like this thick and soft noodle. And the Hakata Brahmin noodle thin is hard. So, and then, uh, there, so there's a pattern. It's either thin or hard or like um, thick and soft noodles. You can have like noodles that are like thick and hard, but like it's it's a uh, it's a hard to eat and like not really good for uh, noodle texture. And um, I, I've I've seen like a lot of different types of uh, different um, trip item ramen specialty ramen shops, and uh, what they're serving like very a lot like in terms of, like noodle size texture and i've seen like a lot that sort of um the thin and hard noodle like hakat ramen noodles um they are three python soup and i've seen like some uh tsukimen style uh three python ramen that couple with uh, the the thick and hard uh, soft noodles and so I, I think it has to it has a lot to do with like a preference of uh, the owner shop owner or like uh, customer's preference. But, like there may be some there may be some like pattern like um, the the more viscous the soup the maybe the uh, the thicker and softer the noodles and chewier the noodles yeah. are. So there may be some patterns uh, that we see like in this uh, three item rag noodles. The noodle size and noodle texture. And this slide uh, just talks about like different types of like noodle sizes. So number 20 is the, the middle size. We consider middle size and then anything thinner than number 20, which is 1.5 millimeter, we, we consider noodles that are on the thinner side. And anything thicker than uh, number 20, we, we consider them as on the like thicker, uh, thicker side of the noodles. So the 20 being middle, uh, the bigger size, the like tsukemen, for example, tsukemen noodles, like number 12, 10, as well as like for udon noodles. And when we're talking about like thin noodle, maybe like number 24, just about 1.3 millimeter. So noodle size, the shape, the square, round, like rectangle, like flat, like affects a lot of um, at least uh, noodle uh, texture a lot, so we we should remember this. Talking about the ingredients for uh, ramen noodles, so these three things you need to have like to make ramen noodles. This is a minimum requirement: the flour, water, consi. So let's talk about flour first. So wheat flour, and we already talked about this, but like the protein part. So higher the protein, the harder the noodle texture. Ash, ash is something that uh, makes the noodle color like darker, uh, has uh, the higher the ash, the stronger the flavor of the wheat. Um, in case of like tori by the ramen, like which, which is typically kind of white in the color, white in color. Uh, like if you make noodles using like high ash content flour, then you know the the noodle become that kind of darker in the, like white soup so like some of the customers like may care about the color so if you are doing the white uh colored soup then you may want to have like flour with low ash content viscosity is something that's not shown on the product label so you have to test it test your flour on a special device uh, which we have at our headquarters. So if you have, um, you know, if you have some flowers that you want to test it, um, you you can send it to us, and then we can uh, send you the results. That's that's free of charge. And then 
So viscosity here is like something a bit different from um, the viscosity we talked about, like in the soup stocks. And but like basically, this is a, how elastic the noodle becomes. And then the more viscosity, the higher the viscosity, the better the noodle texture, basically. So these three things that you need to remember, like when trying to find a good flour for uh, high-time ramen noodles, protein, ash, viscosity. The hydration, we, we already kind of talked about. So basically, higher the hydration, the more water contained in the noodle, like softer the noodle texture. And this picture show, like, shows uh, the diff different, uh, the dough condition of like varying hydration ratio. And uh, another thing I want to point out is that like basically the higher the hydration ratio, the shorter the mixing time, mixing of uh, uh, solid ingredients and liquid ingredients to make dough of noodles. And less water, the longer you have to mix. Another thing I want to talk about water is this, uh, when we cook noodles or when we cook like stocks, you know, we want to use the kind of water we want to use the soft water. The reason is that uh, when we cook the noodles, for example, the noodles have to release the calcium salt and other ingredients from the noodles to the cooking water. And in exchange, it gets water so that the noodles get cooked. But like when you cook the noodles in hot water where uh, they allow like minerals like magnesium, like calcium, there's less room for these ingredients to be released to. So, you know, it takes time, takes time to cook them. Like, so when we cook the noodles like for longer time, the surface noodle melts, which is really bad for noodle texture. And in cooking process like longer time, then we lose, you know, the, a lot of noodles melts into the cooking water. So we losing the noodles as well. And so bad for the noodle texture, and we're losing uh, some noodles in the hot water, and then uh, we're spending more time to cook the same noodles, same amount of noodles, uh, and gas and labor. So, so there's nothing good about like you know cooking um, stocks and noodles in hot water. So, so if you have to do work with the hot water, then you should uh, get um, uh, water softener, which is not, which wouldn't cost you uh, arms and legs. So. You should, you should consider it. Kansi is something that you have to have in ramen noodles. And um, there are many variations of Kansi, but if you expect to consume your noodles like within a week or two, uh, it's a combination of um, potassium carbonate and sodium carbonate. Potassium carbonate hardens the noodle texture, makes it hard, and it changes the noodle color to yellow, and it has a stronger Kansi smell to it. And sodium carbonate has exactly the opposite characteristics. And if we blend these uh, different ratios for different um, noodle sizes, we can remember from the chart, you know, we talked about like, if the noodles, the noodle size is thinner, you want to make it harder for um, better texture. If the noodle size is thicker, then you want to make them softer, for the better noodle texture. So to make the noodle, like we increase amount of potassium carbonate, to make them harder, uh, to make it softer, increase the amount of sodium carbonate to make them softer. So that's about Kansi. Other ingredients we use are so salt. This adds the salty taste to the noodles. And egg we use, like two types of egg we use. So egg white, this like makes the noodle harder and um, it helps retain its noodle texture in hot soup. So because it uh, works a bit as uh, waterproof. So it helps, uh, so it helps like especially like thin noodles um, retain texture in hot soup. Egg yolk, um, it just adds like egg flavor and has a slight yellow color to it. And other coloring flavoring agents, various vegetable powder, chili, seaweed, like, like green tea powder or something or like uh, sweet ink, um, some of the grain flour, like whole rye, local grain flour. These are all good to use. Let's talk about product processes. And this slide is all about like making dough of noodles. And making dough of noodles is like, you know, building a strong foundation for noodles. 
And what, what's important here is that like it's, it's a measuring of ingredients, the right ratios. And how we measure ingredients is that like we measure them by weight, not by volume, even like a liquid. And so we go by, by like grams, like pound, because it's use that more precision, like you know, and then it, we can be more consistent in quality. So if you if you if you make some mistakes like weighing ingredients, measuring ingredients, then the rest of the process wouldn't matter. And so this is the most important process. And mixing, um, so mixing is uh, the purpose of mixing is like to have like good hydration of flour. And uh, what happens is that because our mixer like kind of rotates at 60 rotations per minute, and this is the ideal uh, rotational speed for the uh, noodle dough. And then this agitation granulation happens. So like each flour grain like gradually comes together like to form crumbles of dough as it's mixed with liquid. So that, that's what we want to see happen in mixing. And after mixing, uh, we put the dough in the plastic bag and let it sit at room temperature for like an hour to develop, uh, to help the, develop good instruction inside dough. It's like an uh, image that's shown uh, <clears throat> the right bottom corner. So web-like wooden structures being like being developed like during the resting process. Rough forming, combining resting, second resting. Uh, when I'm, I want to talk about them like later, like when we actually make noodles. So the once the dough is complete, right? Like all we have to do is thin it and to the final thickness and cut it and portion it. And after we make the main two noodles, uh, we rest them in fridge. And then the, for uh, better, to develop like better texture. And cooking, um, so the cooking is, uh, you know, we, we cook uh, noodles like individual, like portion by portion in the individual basket. And when cu cooking noodles, like um, we, we can emphasize more, but like uh, there are many um, people like who, who don't know like how to cook noodles properly. So, I want to emphasize it. So gelatinization needs to be happen for the cooking noodles. So what it is that like starch noodles take up liquid and swell upon heating and becomes clear gel-like texture. Um, you can see that on the, in the, the picture in the right top corner. And so make sure that noodles are gelatinized, like otherwise noodles are still raw. And for like a takeout or stuff, like when the noodles uh, have to travel to customers like for um, a bit of time, then you know we, we should uh, chew the noodles and so that the noodles stop cooking. So you should consider that as well. And this is how noodles get cooked and get soggy, soft. And so this is a cross section of noodles and then uh, so the fresh like you know being cooked and then so there's some like uh, row section of noodles like that's still like remaining like in the center core, and so that that's the kind of kind of bite that you feel like when you bite into the noodles and then so that the water like uh, the soup like still penetrates into the core and then when the, there's no core uh, then the noodles get soggy. So by by changing the cooking time or estimating how long noodles stay in the soup, the noodle size the ingredients. Uh, you can you can control the noodle texture your customers may experience. So, uh, you know you need to think about like hydration rates, like a lot of factors that play into uh, making uh, the noodle texture your customers experience. So the hydration ratio, the noodle size, the shape, uh, ingredients, the you know protein of the flour, etc. So that's that's how you sort of kind of think about like noodle texture. So this is what I have for the lecture, but like, you know, before I, we go start making noodles, uh, I, I just want to touch a bit on like um, the, the benefits of like doing homemade noodles. And it, so if you're a restaurant, right, you have two choices. You can buy noodles from a factory or you can make noodles, your own noodles. And typically like maybe like in the US, like, you know, for regular uh, size of like one serving noodle, like for Python ramen noodles, um, you, you may like probably paying like um, 50 cents in US dollars per serving. 
But if you're making your own noodles, the cost of like making wasabi noodles about like 20 cents to your dollars. And in that, this includes labor, uh, ingredients, and utility fees. So, and that, that's just for one portion. So like, and so you're looking at like 50 to 60% is saving. And, you know, if you say like, if you do like 200 servings a day, and it like, you know, you operate like 24 days a month, and then if you're looking, then you may be looking at like a lot of money, like a lot of saving in a year. And so you can have like better noodles at lower cost, and you can have total control over quality and what you can produce. You know, you know what you're putting into the noodles, right? And because of the lower cost, right, you, you can provide more value to the customers. Like I've seen a lot of ramen shops actually that give out free portions of noodles uh, to the customers who, you know, for having the second uh, bowl or like, uh, you know, they, they can have a choice of like um, choosing, you know, different size, like bigger portion sizes, like for the same price. So this is a tremendous value and it like it wouldn't, it would just cost like 20 cents. So, you know, that's, that, that you know, you, you are willing to like give out like a lot of the values to the customers and then who in turn uh, become like loyal to you and then just keep going back to your restaurants more. And of course you can make unique products using different ingredients and that, that would like help you stand out from other people, other restaurants, businesses. And you can show your customers how you make noodles from scratch. And it's very important too. And because, you know, you can display your ingredients where you're putting into noodles, um, you're, you know, actually making noodles, right? And so that, that gives like uh, your customers like sense of like um, food safety, peace of mind. So this is very, very good. And uh, so this is a typical setup where, you know, you could have like, you know, this setup, um, can produce like up to like 500 servings a day. And so it's like, doesn't take up like much space either. And so before we start making noodles, like I just wanna touch a little bit on like this. And um, you know, like we've been doing this kind of class, like one day class, half day class, um, going to like different locations, like, you know, physically doing this kind of class. Um, in these classes that like we could, you know, tr like let you guys try you know, the noodles, like, you know, what we make it during the class. But, you know, as you can see, it is difficult to do it, um, these kind of online classes. But if you happen to be, like, close to the following locations, Singapore, New York, Amsterdam, Holland, Seoul, Korea, um, or, like, have some ways to, like, reach them, um, just, yeah, please, you know, if you're interested in trying out noodles, um, please uh, feel free to contact us. And if you want to like see the machines in like person, like and then trying out like all these noodles person, um, please feel free to contact us and we can, we're gonna be more than happy to like give you guys private demos. So uh, please feel free to do that. <clears throat> and so we are making, so we're making like just one type of like noodles for um, Tori Python ramen. And today we are using the uh, flour, like protein content of like 11.2%, which is around like kind of medium, like kind of medium, like high. And, but like ash content of like, you know, like remember like ash content? Ash content of like 0.34%, which is like really low, even like for Japanese standard, it's really low. So like, you know, it's even like, it would give you like, very whitish um, colored uh, noodles. And so for, that's the solid ingredients and for liquid ingredients, right? Uh, we have a like kansi, 1% to the weight of flour and one, salt, 1% 1 weight of flour. And this is the water, water uh, that's 33% to the weight of flour. So like in total, 35% uh, hydration ratio, okay? And yeah, so let's start making the dough. So the ma machine we, ha we have over here uh, has a uh, 10 kilograms mixer. So 10 kilograms mixer, so you can mix up to 
10 kilograms of solid ingredients. And but on top of it, you're adding liquid ingredients to it. So at maximum, you may be able to like make like 14 kilograms of dough at a time out of this mixer. And the minimum batch is four. Minimum is four, four kilograms of uh, solid ingredients. So we are doing four now. And she's, she's dissolving uh, currency and salt into the water. So we first need, need to make this solution and liquid, and then add it to the flour in the mixing. So we just wanted to kind of mix it for like one minute, like just with the solid ingredients to kind of crush like a, a big chunks of flour, like in small pieces. And we're adding this two thirds of the liquid first uh, onto the lid, which has like small holes. See the liquid is like dripping through the holes, right? To be added to the flour a little by little. This This helps. Um, promote like good hydration of flour. And this 35% hydration ratio, and remember from the lecture, you know, the medium, this is medium water content noodle, so the mixing time is kind of in the middle, like 10 minutes. We can wait, just looking at it like for 10 minutes. So she prepared the dough in advance. So this is how we rest the dough after mixing. See in a plastic bag, right? Shield it to prevent from drying. And then, you know, let sit at room temperature for an hour. And this is the 35% hydration ratio dough. So that to the crumbles, the size of crumbles, uh, slightly bigger than uh, low, low hydration ratio noodles like uh, Hakata style ramen noodles, like tonkotsu ramen noodles. So basically what we're doing is that like we are we're feeding the dough to the, this machine has a set of rollers and then you can control the, uh, the clearance between these two rollers by this wheel. And then, so we are feeding the dough into the set of rollers, which has, which now has 1.5 millimeter roller gap. So it's, it's very narrow, this roller gap, right? And then the dough goes through it to become sheet of dough. But it's still, still pretty rough sheet of dough because it's just right out, of, right out of the mixer. Yeah, by the way, this machine is called uh, Richman 1 machine. Richman, Richman 1 machine is like rich plus one, a man. Men, uh, men, men, men can also mean like in Japanese, like noodles, rich men, um, one. And this machine is uh, capable of producing up to around 100 servings of fresh noodles in an hour. And um, so I, I said, like, this is 35% hydration ratio noodle, right? And let's say, like, this is this is 10, right? Pretend that this is 10 kilograms of dough, of flour, so that the total weight of dough would be, like, 13.5 kilograms of dough. And out of it, right, one portion may be, um, in, in Japan, typically, right, so 120 to 130 grams per portion. So... Basically, basically like 13.5 divided by 130 grams. So you're looking at maybe like 100 plus like a few few servings. So yeah, from from 
is from like one batch, uh, you should be you should be able to make 100 servings, about 100 servings. So in other countries, like other uh, types of uh, types of noodles, like sukeme noodles, the serving size is bigger. So the uh, the total total number of serving you can get out of uh, one batch they'll be like maybe maybe smaller but um, basically you know you can do the calculation so after so that was like just the initial like sheeting process and then um, the dough is still it's pretty fragile. It's like still pretty weak. Like you can you can rip it apart like pretty easily. Uh, so you want to you want to make it firm. You want to make it stronger by actually like separating it to two sheets and then combining and combining these two separate sheets into one again through the rollers. So that's how you how we uh, make, make this dough sheet stronger, firm. <laughs> and we are we are going very very slow in this uh, sheeting process because we want to we want to put a lot of like good pressure on the dough. And this this helps develop uh, gluten structure further in, inside dough. So the flour we talked about, right? The protein is like 11.2 percent, which is a uh, this is a bit like kind of kind of in the middle like for for uh, flour for ramen noodles which is typical like higher higher than the other types of noodles and so again the the protein content is high which means that like the noodle texture will be like harder but like water ratio wise water ratio that's 35 percent it's like in the middle so it's it's yeah, in terms of hardness, that's that's in the medium, medium, and so then that that should like sort of like determine the uh, the noodle size. So noodle size, you know, we we talked about number twenty or one point five millimeter being the medium, middle middle size. So we wanna go like slightly slightly thinner to have the. Uh, the right kind of texture, so that that sort of like helps you determine the the noodle size, the cutter. And again, like we, after we did that like first combining process, like we are doing it for the second time, just to make sure that the dough is firm enough, and. And so after the second combined process, after the second combined process, we want the dough to stick together, right? Because we want it like we want the, new, the two sheets of dough to be combined to become one. But like after second combined process, where we don't have to do it, like so. But instead, like we don't want it. We want we don't want them to stick together. So to prevent. The dough sheet from sticking, we, we start dusting. We start dusting and and we want to make sure that the length of the sheet is even to make sure that these uh, these sheets are doubled um, evenly. To complete the uh, combining process, so 
So after second combining process, all we have to do is just thin it, thin it to the final thickness. So after second combined process and just just thinning it, right? So we we can go faster. We can go we can go this um, we can let the cheating process like faster. The mixing is done. So we talked about like flour, the protein content being a bit high and hydration ratio, water ratio, 35%, kind of medium. And um, so we're gonna cut it, but like we, before we cut it, right, we want to measure the actual thickness because the actual thickness is always bigger than the water gap we set. And that's 2.23-ish. So there's a difference of 0 0.8 between actual thickness and well, a gap we set, which was 1.5 millimeter. And to get to the final thickness that we want, right, we subtract this difference from the final thickness that we want to see. Want to see. And uh, because, like, the difference was the 8, 0 0.8 millimeter, right? And we want to get to 1.4, 1.2. 1.2 millimeter in thickness, so we want to set the raw gap to 0 0.6, so that we we expect the final thickness to expand back by 0 0.8 to become 1.4, uh, 0. Sorry, 1.2. And um, the cutter we use is this kind of cutter that looks like kind of like paper shredder and though she like goes into that and comes out like strands of noodles and each group is this one 1.4 millimeter in width each group so that's that's fixed so each the width of each noodle strand that, that comes out from noodles is fixed right but the thickness you control by the Roller gap, roller. And number 22, 1.4 millimeter, like, you know, we talk about like different noodle sizes, right? 
And number 20, 1.5 millimeter being the middle, the middle. Uh, number 22, 1.4 millimeter is a bit thinner, a little bit thinner than the medium size. Because even though the protein content of flour is a bit high, uh, the water hydration ratio is medium. So we don't want to go all the way to the thinner side, but like we want to stay closer to the medium size. And those noodles are coming now, and um, you can actually control it like the portion size by the length of the noodles. And you can control the length of the noodles by the volume. You can make it shorter for smaller size. You can make it longer for the bigger size, bigger portion size. And again, like for this type of noodle, uh, portion size is typically, typically in Japan, like 120, 130 grams or maybe like even less or bigger, um, depending on the restaurant shop. And you see, you can make them really long or bigger size. And then suke men and other types of noodles, typically they are thicker. So even though like the length of the same, length is the same, the portion size is actually, you know, ends up like being bigger, a lot bigger than the, this type of noodle because it's thinner. Because it's uh, because the skim noodles are thicker typically, and it like has more hydration ratio, bigger hydration ratio, like you know, con containing like more liquid weight. So even though they're the same length, the noodle size is, should be bigger. Uh, you can make noodles curly automatically or like by ma manually and it's of course um, for like how you store them right we talk about like a third resting process so usually we have like the water absorbing moisture absorbing paper like clay on the, the bottom then uh, we put the another sheet of like water absorbing paper like on top and then um, put, in, put it in the fridge. And they should be good for one week to two weeks. But uh, m most ramen shops like consume them like within like few days. So this is a medium hydration ratio noodles for um, 40 python ramen. And uh, because this is a medium ratio, hydration ratio, so it's a, uh, they, they go well, like with like most, actually most types of uh, 40 python ramen soup. But like if you're, if you're 40 python ramen soup, like very viscous and like rich, thick, thicker, then you want to increase the noodle size, like make make them thicker, to sort of like match with the the thicker, the more dense uh, soup. All right. Um, so okay, um, it's time for us to move to our kitchen and. Let us show you our kitchen and and um, so next week um, is gonna be like uh, some special event that um, we're gonna have like Mr. Fuji like who's a 
actually president of this company and then like he's the he's been like running the school as a principal uh, for the past 20 years uh, he's been working with uh, a lot of customers like around the world um, he's a pioneer of like you know ramen industry I mean restaurant industry and we're lucky to have him uh, to do a lecture on types of ramen that he's, he's gonna show us uh, that's that's gonna be the next week and uh, we're gonna have like page set up like we're ready um, today or tomorrow so you can check us out like on our website like today or tomorrow at tonight or tomorrow then uh, and then sign up sign up for it and then uh, so you know you can you can you can check the mr. Fuji's lecture and then like you can have like some discussion with them and then you can uh, ask him like a lot of questions on uh, the next week so I hope you look uh, look forward to it so let's move to the kitchen And so this is our kitchen where we uh, teach students at our ramen school, udon school, um, Kagawa. And then we have like exactly the same kitchen like in Tokyo office. That's that's in the Shinagawa district. Um, so we have like induction cookers like I show like in the um, slides. And so we have like big induction cookers. Each of them will be like cooking with different ingredients. And so that your students can try each ingredients like how they taste and we are going to be making like 20 30 different types of like tare the the base sauces and like flavor oils um so basically like this is like a lab where you know students can play around with different components materials and um to reach their own um complete recipes you know so that um they can make original of course that we we teach them like uh, from uh, we, we share like all these recipes that we accumulated over the past like 20 years uh, made by like different students right so we have like database of like maybe like over like thousands of like different recipes with us so like this is uh yeah so if you if you care about it like if you're interested in it like you know I hope like these restrictions and like in the country entry like will be uh, lifted like pretty soon and like you'll be able to like come uh, at the end of school and uh yeah so we have your instructors over there uh and then um so let me first introduce mr ikeda um so our chief instructor of ramen school he has a deep knowledge in like experience in like a chinese back cuisine background and then uh he, he he's been working with us like for the past few years like as a chief instructor and like he has taught a lot of students already um coming but mainly coming from like um, Japan and uh, but you know if you have like some questions um, just feel free to like uh, you know send us some uh, you know contact form and then you know you can ask some questions about ramen Chinese cuisine and other, other stuff so thank you Mr. Ikeda. Uh, we have Mr. Sun he's been with us like for the past like just a few months but like no he's um, proven to be very very good um, instructor and the best of all, like he actually for some of you like who are, who are comfortable like you know speaking Chinese, you know, he he's actually he speaks French Chinese like full in Japanese. So um, for those of you like who want to ask some question in Chinese, then yeah, feel free to like send some questions to Chinese and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Sang. Thank you. <clears throat> so here we have like Mr. Takeuchi, you can call him Thomas. Um uh, he's a native of uh, Canadian native, uh, American native. Uh, he's a uh, he speaks uh, English uh, native uh, native language uh, speaking English, and uh, um, he's been with us like for the past few years uh, teaching school, and so we're lucky to have him like to teach us and show us like some of the um, equipment over here, like uh, some of the ingredients we have over here, uh, and then do the lecture on uh, this class. So thank you, Thomas. Okay, thank you, Akira. Once again, uh, my name is Thomas. I'm one of the instructors at the Yamato Noodle School. And today's topic is Tori Paitan. So let me just briefly talk about Tori Paitan. So 
Tori Python. Uh, first of all, the Tori part, it means chicken. So it just explains uh, what kind of ingredient is used for the stock. So for Tori Python, chicken is mainly used. So the ingredients, some of the ingredients used for the stock is chicken carcass, whole chicken, chicken feet, and chicken fat. And Python, what Python means, direct translation is white stock. So what it means that the stock is emulsified and it's cloudy. Okay? But what is emulsified cloudy stock? So to explain what cloudy stock is, I want to talk about clear stock as well. And uh, we call it chintan, and it means clear stock. And for the clear stock, it's prepared at low heat and the stock is never rapidly boiling. So the oil and water is never mixed together. So that, so oil is never mixed into the water. So it keeps the water part uh, clear and which you're gonna end up with clear stock. On the other hand, Python, cloudy stock, uh, it's prepared at high heat so stock is rapidly boiling. There's a lot of movement in the stock pot, so which makes that oil mixed into the water, and these oil particles goes into the water and emulsify the stock, and it makes the stock cloudy and creamy as well. Okay. So once again, it's called clear stock. There's less movement in the stock pot. The, uh, the stock pot is not rapidly boiling, so it's just like lightly simmering. And for the Python cloudy stock, the stock pot is rapidly boiling to mix in the oil into the stock. Okay, so that's the difference: clear stock and cloudy stock. And for Tori Python, um, obviously we're using that white stock, uh, emulsified cloudy stock. Okay, so now I want to talk about the stock making method. I just want to talk about the stock making method briefly. So the first step for the stock making is to put all the ingredients into the stock pot. Okay. So in Tori Python case, you're going to put in chicken carcass, water, chicken feet, chicken fat into the stock pot. And now you bring that stock pot to a rolling boil. And when the stock pot starts to boil, um, this black dark color foam start to um, float up to the surface of the stock, and that's called scum. And that's the impurities from the chicken and all the other ingredients. So you have to remove this scum completely to um, make your taste, uh, make your stock taste pure and nice tasting. So this scum uh, will give that unpleasant taste to the stock, so you have to remove the scum completely. So once that scum removal is done, from that point, all you need to do is maintain that rolling boil until desired density. So what is density? So density is the thickness of the stock. So there's some, for ramen, there's some light, um, lighter soup, and there's some thick, creamy soup. So that's explained by the density. And we use this ramen soup density meter to measure the thickness of the stock. Okay. So what you do is um, you put one or two drops of that stock to this blue part and close the lid and just look through the meter and it shows you that percentage of the stock. And for Tori Python, um, roughly lighter type of Tori Python is around 6% and thicker type of Tori Python is around 10%. So you just aim for around this range and if you want some creamy, thicker Tori Python, just aim for the aim for the higher density. And if you're if you if you're looking for some lighter Tori Python, just aim for that lower density for the stock. And if you're looking for just a pure chicken stock, all you need to do is just keep simmering that stock until the desired density. But if you want to add in other ingredients, for example. If you add in some dry seafood into chicken stock, you're gonna end up with some Tori Gyokai Python. It means chicken seafood Python. 
So if you mix these type of ingredients together, you're going to get some synergy of that umami, and it's going to taste even better. And the same goes for this. Uh, another example is um, if you add in some vegetables, for example, onion and potato, uh, you're going to end up with some tori python vegetable potage. Uh, that's another popular type of ramen in Japan. Okay. And as you keep uh, boiling that stock until that desired density, let's say you aim for 8%. And you reach that 8% density, that's when you strain the stock. And you strain the stock, and what you want to do right after is to quickly chill the stock so you can maintain the stock quality. Okay. So this is just briefly how to make that ramen stock. And if you're looking for like a um, detailed explanation of the stock making, this is a textbook used at a ramen school. And this talks about how to make the stock and also the flavoring sauce and the flavored oil and some toppings as well. So if you're interested, please contact us through the website and we'll reply back to you. Great. And now I want to uh, talk about our method of ramen making, so Yamato method of ramen making. So first of all, to make your ramen soup, you need some three elements. So first, the stock. So this is a creamy chicken stock. And next, you need the flavoring sauce. This is to season the stock. So the stock is not seasoned, so you need this flavoring sauce to give some uh, saltiness or some umami as well. And this is a flavored oil. This is to give the ramen soup uh, richness and also the aroma. Okay. So to make this flavoring sauce and flavored oil, um, you need maybe like 10, over 10 different types of ingredients. So it's very complicated. But at our, uh, at our ramen school, what we do is we prepare each ingredient separately. So for example, this one is soy sauce, and there's some umami, scallop umami in the soy sauce. Okay. And this one is some um, soy sauce with shiitake umami in it. And this one is salt motodare with some sardine dry sardine umami in it. And this is white miso paste. And this is dark miso paste. So at our ramen school, what we do is um, we have these parts. Think of these as a parts for a motodare. So what the students will do is that the students will take these parts and blend them up into their own preferred taste. And as they're blending the parts of these motodare, they record how much of each part they put in. And once the taste is perfectly into their own preference, preferred taste, they're going to end up with the recipe, their own original recipe. And same goes for the flavored oil as well. We have many different types of uh, flavored oil right here. So this is just a few examples. One is garlic oil leek oil, and this is chicken oil, chili oil, and black garlic oil. This is often used for tonkotsu ramen. So same goes for flavored oil. The students blend these parts for this flavored oil into their own pre preferred taste, and they have their own original. They're going to end up with their own original blend of flavored oil. And the reason why we take this method is because um, everyone have their own origin, uh, own preferred taste. So every country has their preferred like taste. So rather than us teaching the students just one specific type of recipe, we allow the students to make their own original flavor. Uh, so that's more valuable for the students. So we take this method. And also by understand. By understanding what goes into one bowl of ramen, the students will understand how to combine each ingredients to make that bowl of ramen. So they'll be able to make all sorts of types of uh, ramen.
So they'll know how to make shio ramen, shoyu ramen, miso ramen, spicy miso ramen. So this is our method. This is our way of teaching our students how to make the ramen. And that's all also explained in this, this textbook. So if you're interested, please consider the textbook as well. OK, so now that the, that's explained, let's actually get, let's, let's actually start making that tori paitan. And today we're going, we're going to make tori paitan ramen and also tori paitan skimen. So I'll start off from making that tori paitan ramen. We're going to use this, this uh, thin, medium hydration noodles for this tori paitan ramen. And we're going to use this thick, high hydration noodles for tsukimen. And this one's a little bit different because we blended some, uh, blend some black pepper into the noodle dough. And it's gonna, get kick, uh, it's gonna give some little bit of kick to that noodles. So going to start off from heating up the stock. So this is that tori paitan stock. The density is around 8%. I'm just going to take one scoop of this chicken stock. So let's heat up the stock. And next. We're going to take that one scoop of this flavored oil, uh, flavor, sorry, flavoring sauce, motodare. It's going to take one full scoop of this flavoring sauce and one full scoop of this flavored oil. Okay. Now I'm going to boil these uh, noodles for chicken tori paitan. This boiling time will be around one minute and make sure that boiling machine is rapidly boiling and put in the noodles into the basket for the first five or 10 seconds. What you wanna do is mix the noodles. You don't, never want the noodles to clump up and um, clump up together. And you want to see the noodles moving around in the basket freely for that consistent boil. Good. So while the noodles are boiling, The stock is ready. So I'm going to take this, take one scoop of this chicken stock, one full scoop, and into the ramen bowl. Five more seconds. Okay. And make sure to strain out the boiling water completely. This is gonna dilute the soup. So strain out the water completely. Okay. And you wanna put the noodles into the, that soup. And what you want to do is you want to lift up the noodles and line it up nicely. And for the toppings, we have chicken chashu. This one is a uh, sous vide, so it's nice and tender. And some red onion. and soft boiled egg, and thinly sliced green onion in the back, and thinly sliced chili pepper on top of the green, a nice color. Okay, so this is how to prepare your tori paitan ramen.
Okay, next, we're going to make Tori Python skimmin. So we're going to use this thick skimmin noodles. And I think the boiling time will be around five to six minutes. So start boiling these noodles. Once again, once you put the noodles into the basket, mix for the first five or ten seconds. So skim in noodles, what you do is you want to overboil the noodles. So you want to overboil the noodles so it's nice and soft. And then what you want to do is you want to wash the noodles and chill the noodles. Okay. So once you chill the noodles, the starch is going to harden. So that's why you want to overboil the noodles so that it's nice and soft. And then it's chilled so the starch hardens so it's perfect texture uh, once it's chilled. Okay. So think of the boiling time um, 1.5 or 2 times longer than when you're uh, serving it warm. So for these thick noodles, if you're serving these noodles uh, warm, Boiling time will be around, I will say, three minutes. But since we're serving it cold, you want to boil it maybe five or six minutes and then chill the noodles. Okay. So now let's prepare that dipping sauce. So this is the chicken stock for skimming. The density is around 15%. It's a, little, it's a lot higher than the ramen. Okay, so I'm going to take one scoop. And one thing that's different when you're preparing your skim in is that you want to put the flavoring sauce and the flavored oil directly into that um, saucepan. Okay. I'm, I'm going to put in some fish powder in here as well. This is mackerel and udume powder. And a little bit. Of, I'm going to add in some little bit of chili pepper for that kick, and I'm going to heat it up. The reason why everything's mixed in that saucepan is because um, skimming sauce is a lot thicker than the ramen soup, so it's a little bit harder to mix. So if you put everything into the bowl, it's not going to be consistently mixed. So that's why you want to put it into a saucepan, everything's a saucepan, and completely mix and heat it up together, and then put it into the bowl. Okay. Okay, so let's just wait for that dipping sauce. Let's just wait for that dipping sauce to heat up. I'm going to talk about the toppings. So we have, once again, we have that sous vide chicken chashu. It's nice and tender. And soft boiled egg, seasoned in soy sauce. And some tomato slice. Red onion slice. Mitsuba leaves. So, it's not connected. Ready? Okay. So, so, we have a question, what goes into that fish powder? So, once again, the fish powder, uh, I mix some mackerel powder and urume powder. But it can be anything. You can use bonito powder as well, or even some scallop powder it goes well as well. So, anything works well. But we like to use mackerel and udume powder. Okay, okay so the skim and noodles are cooked. So the noodle into the strainer. And 
And what you want to do is, first thing you want to do is to mix, I mean wash, and completely remove the starch around the noodle. And you remove that water once, and wash it, wash it one more time. And second time is to chill the noodle. And now what you want to do is you want to grab the noodles nicely so that you can uh, plate the noodles nicely onto the plate. So now that the noodles are ready, okay. so for the toppings, chicken chashu, tomato slice, sudachi citrus, and sopo de on the side. And some red onion on top. And Mitsuba leaf for that nice green. Okay. And that dipping sauce is ready as well. So I'm just going to pour the dipping sauce into the bowl. So this is how to prepare your tori paitan ramen and tori paitan tsukemen. And today we change it up by using black pepper noodles. We mixed in some black pepper into the noodle dough. So as you bite into that noodles, it's going to give that nice um, black pepper spiciness. It's going to give that nice kick to that taste. So it's, it's very interesting. So yeah, please, uh, if you're, <laughs> it's, give it a try. If you have some noodle, the noodle machine, you can make some noodles. Okay. So if there's some questions. Okay. So we have... We have a question, how long is a stock typically boiled for? So back to the board. So after the ingredients are into the stock pot and you do the scum removal, boiling time will be around six to eight hours. So in total, it can be up to eight to 10 hours. So if you're preparing um, stock that's density 8%, I would say just aim for around eight, eight hours of boiling time. So, uh, we have a question, was that a lime? No, this is a sudachi citrus. It's a type of citrus typically used for some Japanese cuisine, often used for soba and also udon as well. It's a little bit bitter and also very sour. And it goes very well with Japanese cuisine. And we have another question, how long will the stock keep after making it? So after the stock is ready and you quick, quickly chill the stock, that's important. So you can't just leave the stock um, to um, slowly cool down. You have to quickly chill the stock to maintain the quality. And then once it's quickly chilled, you put it in the refrigerator. And I will say it will last for around three days. Um, why we need to still chill the stock? It's because 
yeah, the bacteria will start to grow in the stock if you slowly cool down the stock. So you have to quickly chill down the stock so it gets, uh, just like you, can't, you have to get out of that dangerous temperature zone, which is around 20 to 40 degrees. So you have to get out of that dangerous temperature quickly as possible so that bacteria won't grow uh, as much and you can keep the stock uh, nice and safe. Okay, so that's about it from my side. So I'm going to pass it back to Akira. Okay, thank you, Thomas. That was a great uh, lecture. And then, um, so, you know, what pre Python ramen has been like a very, very popular um, type of ramen. And, uh, well, it's been like polished and polished like over the years and like uh, more and more like famous shops are coming up with some new styles. And so, you know, we may do another class like on pre Python ramen like in the future. So, thank you so much for uh, attending our class today. And uh, we'll see you in the next class. So thank you. Bye.